Hi, everybody. We're going to get more into measuring phase shifts when you're doing AC, um, RL, RC, and RLC circuits, both series and parallel. So let's just go over how we do that. So first thing we'll do is review the formula for phase shift, okay? And it's theta or the phase shift in, in degrees is equal to delta T over T times 360. So the capital T is the period of the wave. Okay, so if it's 500 mil, if it's 500 hertz, times two millisecond, uh, yeah, two millisecond period. Okay, so delta T will be the time between the two waves, and that's what we'll go over. And once we have those two values, we can calculate phase shift. So if we go to uh, one of our examples here, okay, we just create a little RC circuit, all right? So you'll see that when we're on here, we have two waveforms, and they are not in phase, okay? You see that one is not in phase with the other. So they don't cross zero at the same time. That's your first clue. So what we're gonna do here is I have this wave, right? Now, there's channel one, and there's channel two, all right? So what we need to do is we need to know the period of this wave. So the signal I have going into the circuit is 500 hertz. So the period is two milliseconds, one over 500. All right, now what I need to do is I need to measure the time channel two lags channel one, okay, or channel one leads channel two. So channel one is happening and then channel two happens after because time is progressing this way, all right? So the way to accurately measure delta T is we need to measure the best place to do it, that I like to do it, is where they both cross the zero line. So we're gonna measure the time between here and here, okay? So let's, um, let's blow this up a bit, okay? We're gonna stretch this wave out. Let's just go to the grapher. We're gonna stretch this wave out so we can get the most accurate reading possible. So 500, so let's go here. So we see the channel one crosses there and channel two crosses there, okay? Can we get a little more accurate yet? We can. Channel one crosses there, channel two crosses there. Now, we're gonna use the cursor function. We wanna measure the distance from here to there, all right? When they cross zero. So, let's go to cursor, and let's select the x-axis. Right? And they're already labeled channel one, channel two. So what we wanna do is we could take these and move them. We, we click and drag. And let's get it so we at this signal where it crosses zero volts. So here's where I am. Okay, so it's at zero seconds, that's the beginning. And the voltage is picovolts. So let's just say it's zero. Okay, now let's take the other. Let's take channel two and let's follow channel two until it crosses the zero line. So if we look down here, we keep an eye on the voltage. Let's see when we cross zero, negative 40, negative 27, negative 15, negative 24. It's pretty gentle there, so I'm just going to hang around the negative two millivolt. Okay, so if we look here now, delta X, it's 400, 1.59 microseconds. So it's saying that the distance or delta T between the two waves is 401 microseconds. All right? Now, let's go back to the desktop version of Microsoft, micro, uh, Multisim, sorry. So we're here now. All right, just switch screens.
And here we are. So what we have, I have the same circuit, 500 hertz, 1K, 1 microfarad. And now this is our signal. So let's just stop it. Okay, let's see if we can get more of this. Okay, so let's stretch. So they're both on the same zero line. I put channels one and two on the same zero line. So there's channel one and there's channel two. So let's see if we can stretch that out a bit. There we go. Now, on multi-sim desktop, to get the cursor function, we click cursor and then the type, and we want to do time. So voltage time, there we go. And we will use these two position knobs to move the cursor to where we want them. So I'm going to move cursor one to where channel one crosses the zero line, and then cursor two, okay, to where channel two crosses the zero line. So we're about there, okay? There. So again, delta T, 400 microseconds. So a multi-sim online, we have 401 microseconds. Here we have 400, so let's just say it's 400. All right, so delta T is 400 microseconds, the distance between here and here. Okay, and to get that, I went to cursor, I set the type to time, but then I use position for channel one and channel two, the vertical positioning, to move the cursors across. Okay, so delta T, 400 microseconds. T, two milliseconds. So let's go back to our formula. Let's see how that works out. Okay, so we're back here again. Theta is equal to delta T over T times 360 degrees, because we know one full cycle of the sine wave is 360 degrees. And delta T over T will give us the proportion of one full cycle that the shift is. Okay, so theta equals the phase shift, delta T is the time between the waves, and T is the period. So we plug in our values, we end up with this, 400 microseconds over two milliseconds times 360 degrees. So our phase shift is 72 degrees for this particular circuit, okay? So again, we can measure the distance between the two waves using the cursor function which is located here. And then um, in multi-sim desktop, the cursor function is, we would stop the wave first, and then we hit cursor, the time we set it, the type we set at the time, and then we use the position for the vertical channels of one and two, to move the two, and they will tell you what the distance is between the two cursors, which is 400 microseconds. All right, and as always, if you have any questions, ask your lab professor or post to the discussion board. Thanks.